Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Princess Auto See at Work, the show where you get to see our fantastic products live in action. I'm your host, Dan Verbal, and I'm here, as always, by my good friend, Mr. Derek Chalmers. Dan, nice to be here. Yeah, good. Good to be here again. Uh, we're back inside. Last time we were outside in the blazing heat. Nice to be in the, uh, the workshop as it is. And we got a great topic to cover today. That's right. Um, one that uh, I'm very familiar with uh, and you're very familiar with, air tools. Yeah, air tools and yeah, air tool I'm accessories. Very familiar with air very, tools. I understand. Very familiar. Yeah. I looked at what we were talking about today and I said, wow, I've got all of these at home. I do not. So, <laughs> so that's why you're here to help bring everyone up to speed. Sure. So first and foremost, if you're a, a regular handyman kind of guy, you're thinking about getting into air tools, right. what are some of the things you need to know? Uh, well, I mean, the big thing you're starting off with a compressor, so you're going to want to look at uh, if you have one, uh, what size it is, what kind of uh, cubic feet per minute it puts out what kind of pressure it puts out, um, and uh, is it going to be enough for what you're going to do? Uh, we can answer those questions in the store. Um, come and see us. Give us a call. Um, we've got a, a range of accessories here we can talk about real quick that kind of gets the, uh, the ball rolling. Um, we've got some filter dryers, uh, desiccant activated. So the desiccant inside these filter dryers is going to pull moisture out of the system. Uh, you don't want any moisture in your air tools or, or going through anything uh, paint uh, product you might be spraying. Uh, it's pretty important. Uh, we've so got that's the desiccant, sorry. Desiccant, this, yeah. Yeah, so that, I, I'm reading on the side, silica gel. So that's, that's right. familiar. Yep. So we've got a... Uh, buy new shoes. That's right. Products that's like true. That. The little packages yeah. you get inside, or, or in some of the toolboxes, <laughs> yeah. you'll get them too. It takes out the moisture. So it uses these small pellets here. Um, once these are activated and they have moisture in them, they'll start to change color from this kind of a dark royal blue to like a pale translucent pink. So once that's changed, uh, once that turns pink, I should say, that uh, needs to be changed. That means it's not trapping all the moisture and it's just going to be continuing on down the line to your tool. Mm -hmm. um, and once the water gets into the tool, if it's excessive, um, it'll mix with the oil that's in there and just do a lot of damage. Uh, you want to try and keep that as dry as you can. Okay. Yeah. And what about some of these, uh, some of these attachments here? Uh, well, let's, first let's go to the hose. Yep. Is, is the hose, I mean, the hose is obviously an integral component it is, yep. of the air compressor setup. That's right. Um, any rhyme or reason to pick in a certain type of hose? Um, well, I mean, there's a few different things you can look at. You can look at the size of the hose. Uh, inside diameter is how hoses are measured. So commonly you'll have quarter inch, three eighths and half inch. Um, obviously you're gonna try and pick that uh, proper size to do the job you're doing. If you're doing uh, some woodworking, some brad nailing, um, doing some roofing, uh, carpentry, quarter inch line would be fine. You could use a three eighths. Uh, when you start to move into the larger diameter lines, the lines get heavier. Mm -hmm. And of course, as they get longer, they get harder to control, reel up, that kind of thing. Um, so you'd want to kind of uh, be prepared for that. If it's going to be something uh, like a large tire gun or a lot of sandblasting you're going to be doing, you want to go to a larger hose to get more air delivered to the tool. Okay. So it's something to kind of consider. So just a reminder, uh, if you're watching, uh, please make sure you can chime in at any point in time with comments, questions, uh, anything. We'll be happy to answer them live on air. I've got my phone here. Uh, that's how I get all the information. And uh, we want to hear from you. So if you have any questions at any point in time for myself, but probably more for Derek, <laughs> Fire those through. Um, so we got the hose covered. Yep. We got the air filter with the silica. Yep. Uh, that's probably, that's the same yep. thing. Just the larger version and a smaller version. Yep. So the attachments. Yep. Like the, uh, the attachments you're going to buy, most people have seen these. Uh, when you get a tool, if it comes with a fitting, or if you buy a compressor and it comes with a chuck on it, it's going to be an M style. M is in Mary. That's the most common style of uh, fitting that you're going to get. Uh, typically, it's a quarter inch. Can get them in three eighths. Um, it's uh, kind of a catch-all, uh, fits most of the tool bodies. When you start to get into the larger tools, like I mentioned before, they might take a larger size of a fitting. Um, okay. And that's why you want to look at um, the fitting size. So we're going to talk about in a second here, I've got an, uh, an H style fitting, H is in hotel. So why are they, what's the point of the letters? What does that well, represent? Well, it's desig designating the style, uh, the size of the shank, um, the size of the orifice inside, that's the delivery of the air. Um, so it's going to give you, you're going to have to match them, right? M yeah. goes with M, uh, H goes with H, etc. Okay. So for instance, the two verses, I've got some here and I'll hold them up. You can see the difference in them. So on this side, the left side, I've got the M style and I've got the H on this side. So if you can see that. Oh, I can see the difference, yeah, big time, yeah. big time difference. So you're getting about, I'd say probably close to 75% more airflow through the H than you would the M. And the H is on the left. The H is the larger one, yeah. And that, I, I did notice a difference. I started out with an M. Uh, I had a 60 gallon compressor uh, when I started out and yeah. I could see the difference putting on an H. 
it was marked. Um, and I mean, that's going to help get the, the biggest bang for buck, especially if you're working with a smaller compressor, you could go to a larger fitting. It's going to get more air delivery and you can go up to a 3 8 hose. And, and in some cases you could even go to up a half inch hose um, just to get as much air to the tool mm. as possible. Just that you're not starving the tool for air. Awesome. Yep. Well, before we, before we keep rolling on, just in case you, some people are just tuning in now, just starting here, we're talking about today on See at Work, we're talking about air tools. So we've just walked through a few necessities that are needed before you can even dive into purchasing these tools to use. You need a compressor right. and you're going to need some of these fantastic accessories to make sure that your compressor is running well, number one, and number two, that you have the hose to attach the tool to your compressor to make it work. So with that being said, We've covered off, what is this before we dive in? I, I air tool oil. that. Yep. Air tool. So, so air tool oil. That so goes in the compressor goes, and the tool. Nope, goes into the tool. So the tool is going to stay lubricated. And of course, with the dryers and the water separators, it's going to keep the water out. Um, important to lubricate uh, on a daily basis. Or if you're doing something where you're, you're doing a, uh, you know, a lot of sanding, a lot of grinding, uh, maybe do a little bit more of the application throughout that job just to keep everything uh, lubricated. Um, heat and dry, they're only going to do damage to the unit. So That's a lot of oil. Daily? Yeah. Daily, yep. Wow. yep, a few drops here and there. Um, you can put an, a lubricator on the line if you have a dedicated line for an impact wrench or a, uh, a riveter, say, mm -hmm. um, you're doing a lot of work with that. You could put a dedicated lubricator on the line, fill it with oil, and then the onus is off of the operator. It just automatically lubricates it. So That's it stays, yep, it stays, <laughs> it stays lubricated and you just walk away from it. All right, well, that gives everyone a kind of a good baseline. So now you know the name of the show, it's See at Work. So let's, let's see it work. Let's move some of this stuff sure. away. Yep. Um, and let's start with, why don't we start with this orbital sander? I think sure. that's uh, a good as place as any to start. Um, we're also, you're gonna notice when we start using the tools, we are gonna put on some PPE um, as you should. We have our ear coverings, <laughs> like ear muffs, <laughs> head, ear muffs, head covers, uh, our gloves and our safety glasses. Right. And as well, I think we also have some masks too. We do, yeah. When we which, get into the sanding, that's uh, important to keep the particulate out. Which might hinder our ability to speak a little bit, but we'll, we'll do our best. Sure. We have some questions. Um, Peter in Toronto, he says, good idea to install inline filters to prolong tool life or not really necessary? Uh, filters are important. Um, as the tank ages, typically the tank on the inside is untreated. It's raw metal. So uh, any debris that's going to be coming through um, the line is going to end up at some point in the tool. There is typically a pre-filter screen at the base of the tool where the fitting attaches. Um, that will take most of the, uh, of the material out that is uh, you know, going to go in to damage the tool, but uh, it won't catch everything. So if it's a really small particulate, it'll get trapped in the filter first. So it's not a bad idea. Okay, one more question before we fire this thing up. Curtis in Calgary, do you know how is the easiest way to remove an old seized stud? An old seized stud? Well, there's a few different... Uh, We're getting uh, deep right off the <laughs> bat. I like A this. few different thoughts on that. I mean, uh, heat is always good. Heat's Jeez. helpful. Um, so in some cases... instruction manuals for these, If hey? you can, that's on the top. Okay. Nice. Yeah, no, I think I had it down. I was going the with script. the Bane look for yeah, a little okay. while there. But um, what you can do, uh, I mean, shock, either cold or hot, works well. Um, if you can get access to it and you have a MIG welder, you can actually weld a nut onto the stud if it is accessible. And that heat shock um, will uh, help loosen that, that stud in most cases. And the nut uh, will actually help get a tool on that so you can get a ratchet or a wrench on there. Um, and then, you know, very good penetrating oil is helpful as well. Um, yeah, there's, there's a few different ways to go about it. There are stud removers that we do sell as well. If it is uh, easily accessible, uh, it uh, kind of multiplies the force on the stud. So it uh, uses the uh, uh, a face uh, of a, a knurled component inside, which grabs that stud. And, uh, you know, you can use a, a lever or a torque wrench on it. Yep. Okay. So we're going to be using the orbital sander. So tell us a little bit about this unit. Yep. Well, this is one of our pro point models. It's a six inch random orbital sander. Um, it uses a hook and loop pad. So hook and loop is just another word for Velcro. Pull that off. It's got backing paper on it and it's quickly changed from grit to grit. Um, it's got uh, some holes inside for the vacuum. It does have a vacuum attachment on it, which is really kind of nice. So if you're doing a lot of woodworking, even into auto body, if you've got a shop vac um, or a dust collection system, you can open up a valve and close a valve on it and that'll allow any dust that's going to get picked up, the vacuum's going to draw it through the machine and just keep the work area clean. That's perfect. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah. And it's also important to note, um, if you're going to be doing a lot of sanding, if you do have an air compressor in the vicinity, um, whether it's wood sand or auto body sanding, do your best to keep the filters clean on that because any air that you have in your shop, ambient air, is going to go into the compressor. 
And if it is very fine particulate, it can travel into the compressor and it actually can gum up inside the compressor. And you'll find, uh, you know, it's going to lessen the life of it. And uh, in some cases, it's going to damage it uh, rever irreversibly. Okay. Yeah. Well, we should let, let the folks out there watching know that today, all the products that we'll be showing, all the air tools we'll be showing, you have a chance to win these air tools. So stick around to the end of the show and we'll be doing a draw. So if you comment, ask a question, you'll be entered in for the chance to win one of the three tools that we're featuring today. So if you aren't going to stay to the end to watch us try to use, uh, what are we going to do? We're going to take, we're going to have a little contest. Yep. We're not going to get into the details. We're not going to get into the details. But stick around till the end for your chance to win uh, the product that Derek is about to show you right now. Sure. And for the next two after that, we're not going to tell you what they are. Yeah. All, All right. right. Yeah. So uh, we've got a couple uh, pieces of uh, material here. We've got some sheet metal steel. Uh, we've got some primer on it, we've got some enamel paint, and we've got a rust solution that we sprayed on it to kind of mimic if you've got an old vehicle you're going to be sanding down. I think it looks good already. It looks not bad. <laughs> now I've got, I've got a 60 grit uh, sanding disc on here, so that's a little bit aggressive for most cases for doing this. Now it all depends on what you're doing. Uh, I did uh, put it on because we're going to be using it on the plywood first, and we've got just kind of a, I guess, a latex paint on here if you're refinishing something or you're doing a little bit of woodworking, uh, just to see how fast uh, some of the heavier grits will take the... Um, We'll take the product off. So if you want to put on your mask. Let's do it. Put it on the right way this time. That's right. And we'll put on our ear protection. All right. Okay. And we'll give it a shot. Looking good. Yeah, so it's reasonably Looking aggressive, good. right? If you're taking down some, uh, you know, restaining or something like that, you want to refinish a tabletop that might be scratched up. Uh, you can work through rougher, coarser grits all the way down to fine grits and then apply a new finish and, uh, you know, bring back a table or, you yeah. know, some kind of a piece of furniture. And of course, we didn't use the vacuum attachment, so we we've, did not. we've left this nice, what, what do yep. you call this stuff? That's man glitter. That's man glitter. Sawdust. Okay. Yeah, that's Sawdust. man glitter. Got it. Now, one thing to note, um, when we're going to be working with wood, um, the disc can get clogged up. So what we do sell as well, and this can be used on sanding discs, it can be used on belts, uh, any kind of a, a sanding application, is a, a block uh, that's going to clean the dust out of there. So if it's really clogged up, it's mm -hmm. going to give you extra life. If the sanding grit is still in good shape, you can clean all the debris out of that, and it's just going to uh, extend that. It's going to save you money in the long run. How long do these, these grits last? It depends on what you're doing. Yeah. If it's really aggressive and you're, you're um, uh, you know, you're, you're, you know, spinning on something really coarse, it's going to wear down fast, yeah. right? And the higher grits uh, that are finer, they're going to wear down a little bit faster because the, uh, the material is not as aggressive. Uh, one of these blocks is around $12, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, it lasts quite a while. So if you've got a belt sander or a spindle sander, anything that's got a collar or something on it that's going to have sandpaper, uh, cleans up really quick. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, let's move on. Sure. Let's move on to the metal. Yeah. You want to give it a shot? You know, I'll give it a shot. Sure. I'll give it a shot. And just remember, you have a chance. If you're watching right now, you have a chance to win the tools that we're using. By the way, you're watching See at Work. I'm Dan. This is Derek. Today we're talking about air tools, and I'm about to use an orbital sander for the first time in, well, probably over a decade. So, you know, it's going to go pretty well. What, uh, what area should I focus on here? It's up to you. You've got some rust, you've got some primer, and you've got some enamel paint. So you're, the world's your oyster. Where is the... Oh. Paddles right here. <laughs> I can do that all day. Sure. All day. Look at that. I feel like I've accomplished more in those 20 seconds than I have most of my life. That's right. <laughs> yeah, no, it makes short work. I mean, like I say, if you put an aggressive uh, grid on there, it, it knocks it down pretty quick. So, um, you know, you can kind of buy uh, individual grit packages we've got here. Um, it'll have the same grid in. And I've also got some right here that have a, most, a mixture of grits. So I go from about 60 to 180, I believe, in here. Okay. Actually, no, this one up to 240. So this one's really good. If you're going to be doing, let's say, a tabletop and you want to knock it down pretty quick and then get up to a, a finish kind of a, uh, a coat on it, you could do that. 
Nice. Yeah. Okay, we've got a few questions coming in after that display. Uh, da, 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 da. Let me. Gord asks, can a compressor tank be welded? Uh, I would suggest that any steel could be <laughs> welded. Uh, commonly, anything that's under pressure, you'd want to be very cautious. And I would say if you were ticketed for pressure vessels, that would be the best option. Okay, so Gord, I don't know about that. Um, <laughs> Adam in Winnipeg, what was the sandpaper cleaning thing called? The sandpaper cleaning thing? Uh, it is a sanding belt disc and drum cleaner. Sanding it's a task brand. Yeah, I believe we have that listed in our uh, website. Um, and I think it's in the show notes as well for today as Very one of nice. the accessories. Uh, Jenna in Winnipeg would like to know, can the sander also be attached to a regular dry vac hose or does it need the vac bag? I think no, it can go into the... It, it actually, yeah, it has a hose here yeah. and it can be hooked up if you've got a shop vac or a cyclone dust collector or something like that, you could hook it up to something like that. Absolutely. All right. Well, we have some more questions. We're going to keep going with the products though. So our next product that we're going to uh, feature is my personal favorite. The, is it the air, air punch flange tool? That's it. Yeah. That is it. <laughs> It looks great. It is. <laughs> Can it's, you tell us a little a bit about tool. it? <laughs> sure. So we've got, a, we've got a few iterations of these. So this unit here specifically is a, a 5 16 punch and flange tool. So it's going to uh, accomplish two things. It's going to punch a hole, a 5 16 diameter, um, which is great if you're doing uh, plug welding. You're putting in a body panel, floor pan, rockers, uh, patch panels, those kind of things. Um, and it's also going to flange. So when you talk about a flange, if you can take a look at the tool here, Right on this side here, there's the flange. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna step down uh, an edge of the sheet metal. And we've done a little bit here, mm -hmm. if you can see that. And so what that would accomplish is if you put this flange on an edge like so, you cut a floor pan out, let's say in a car, and you wanna put another piece in. You could run this flange end around the inside of the hole that you've cut. And that would allow another piece of sheet metal to drop down and lay flush on it. And on that piece of sheet metal that you'll be inserting for the patch panel, you'd punch a hole in it, like we've done here. And that would allow some plug welding with a MIG welder, let's say, just to give it some reinforcement. And then you can go back and finish it. You can stitch weld around the outside, tack weld, whatever you'd like to do, seam sealer. So there's a few different things you can do with this tool. And there also is a 3 16 diameter uh, punch tool that we have as well. Same form and function, it's just a smaller hole. Well, we yeah. did do it before, as you see on uh, right there, but let's yep. do it again. Sure. We got we to see it work. Yep. Absolutely. So we don't need a dust mask for this necessarily. So we'll just put on Thank our... Thank goodness, because that's yep. complicated. It is. <laughs> and just a reminder, everyone watching, you can win these tools that we're showcasing today. Stick around to the end and we will do the draw, as it were. Uh, so let's, let's give this tool a go. Yep. All right. So we're going to work with the flanging side. So we're going to continue on with this flange here and you can flange a step edge. Just push it in until it meets the back of the tool and hit the flange. And then move over. Would a would a compress like what size compressor is ideal for this tool? I mean, so something like this is going to be quite small. It doesn't need a lot. This is around three cubic feet per minute requirement because it is just a single action. Yeah. So it's not spinning. It's not a high RPM tool like a sander or like yeah. an impact something like that. So you get away with a smaller compressor. Now, if you're going to be doing auto body commonly. Um, you know, you might have something larger because if you're going to be doing some sandblasting, let's say, I mean, I would suggest smaller compressors can be used minimum for big jobs. If you're doing a frame and a lot of body panels, uh, maybe 60 gallon up would be a good starting point. Yep. And we're going to do a punch as well. So we're going to do some punching for uh, plug welding here. So same thing. We're going to drop in right to the end of the throat and it's going to drop out a small plug of metal and you can space these as far or as close apart as you need. I think I'd like to, uh, let me try that guy. Sure. That's cool. Yep. Three hole punch, just like in yep. school. Yeah, you can use it on paper, sure. <laughs> yeah. That might be a little overkill. <laughs> Bring this into class. If you have the tools. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good mantra, actually. If you have the tools, why wouldn't you? Very nice. Yeah. Smooth. Yeah, so it's nice and quiet. I mean, you know, hearing protection is not really required. Eye protection, of course, and gloves if you're working with sheet metal are, are, are handy, right, to keep the sharp edges away. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is, uh, this is quite a handy tool. It's uh, pretty specific to the job, but it's very helpful, uh, especially if you're doing a lot of smaller patches and you don't want to do a butt joint, which is just two pieces of metal yeah. that are welded together. You have special clamps, you can put them together and keep the seam wide. But um, yeah, this is a really handy tool. Very nice. All right, well, for those of you just tuning in, you're watching See at Work. I'm Dan. This is Derek. Today we're talking about air tools. 
We've already showcased the orbital sander, the flange punch, right? And now we're moving on to one that uh, I probably was, I wouldn't say most synonymous with air tool. People know this one. Sure. Right? Yeah. The, the, the impact wrench, the, yeah. stu the stubby. This is a micro stubby impact wrench. So this is a, a micro stubby. Micro it stubby. It's more than a stubby. It is. It's it is a, a micro stubby. stubby. That's right. Yeah. So it's a small body, um, composite, uh, lightweight. So it's around three pounds. Um, again, this unit could be used uh, automotive repair, disassembling, assembling. Mm -hmm. um, you could uh, run this with a small compressor. Um, it would, I think five cubic feet per minute is kind of the range you're going to be working with this. Optimum up to 15 CFM. So if you want the best bang for the buck out of the tool, um, you're looking at a 500 foot pound uh, maximum working range on this. So that's a lot higher than you know That's, most people would need around yeah. the garage typically but uh, <laughs> this this tool pro point is one of our brands where it could easily be put into a trade so yeah all right well before we plug in and do this we've sure. got a couple more questions yeah, let's do that. that have come in we are going to be doing a bit of a challenge so we've, we've yeah. got this tire here this is what we're going to be doing we're going to be using this we're going to take off the tire we're going to put it back on we're going to time it it's going to be a contest between derek and myself but right. a few questions before we get to that right um where are we here? Brent, my compressor's pressure release. This is this is again is getting deeper. Getting compressor sure. questions. Here we go. My compressor's my compressor's pressure relief valve no longer holds pressure. As soon as pressure in the tank builds, in the the valve that's behind the tool pressure adjustment dial blows air out. Is it possible to repair this part of the compressor? Yeah, so typically these are gonna be on a pressure switch. So if the pressure switch itself is not leaking. Um, and it's the pressure relief valve and you're certain it's that valve, it certainly can be uh, replaced. Now, the one thing to figure out is on the valve, there's gonna be a rating on it. So it's gonna be typically 120, 150, 175 PSI. So that would mean if the tank uh, shut off on the pressure switch is 120, uh, if it's rated at 150, it's gonna allow that, uh, if the switch fails and it doesn't shut off and it keeps pumping and builds pressure, it's gonna allow the pressure to escape from that valve and not uh, rupture the tank and have a, a larger problem. Now, also on the air compressor pressure switches, there is a, um, uh, an unloader circuit. So when your pressure uh, uh, reaches its peak pressure that the switch is set at and the motor shuts down, the pump shuts down, you'll hear the air discharge for a brief second or two. And that's the unloader circuit working. That takes the pressure off the top of the pump and allows it to uh, freewheel a little easier when the motor kicks back in and starts that pump uh, compressing. It doesn't have a charge of air in the top tank to uh, work against. So, if the valve isn't leaking, it's possible it could be the pressure switch. So that's something you'd have to be cautious of too because they're very close to each other. And a charge of air like that, 120 or higher uh, in PSI, is kind of hard to track down sometimes, uh, especially if it's just coming out the back of something, right? So um, yeah, but pressure switches and pressure relief valves, easy. It's just a few minutes. Couldn't have said any better myself. Um, we have some B-roll footage of the stubby in action. So take a look at your monitors. We're going to switch from us. You're going to see this tool in action. Uh, Derek, maybe you can give some play-by-play -play sure. here. Yeah, well, he's looking like he's doing some, uh, some, <laughs> some motor work here. Um, yeah, you can use... Uh, Is that an attachment? Of, yeah, that's an extension yeah. with a, a swivel uh, attachment on the end of it to get into a, an odd angle. Um, sometimes you've got to work around a steering column or some compressor lines or something like that and uh, it makes for short work. And it is nice how small and compact this is. It is because, very, yeah. I mean, you saw there how, like you said, yeah. the tight spaces you gotta deal yeah, with. I mean, like in comparison, we've got just a oh, kind of yeah. a standard size half inch air impact. And you can see the difference here. If you wanna hold this guy up. Sure. I'll hold this one in front of it. And you can kind of see back to back, front to front. There's quite a difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I mean, if you're getting into a tight spot, I did use, I have one of the ProPoint units at home. Uh, a couple years ago, I was doing a front end on a Jeep and uh, to get into some of the tight spots to drive some bushings out and work on some of the ball joints and whatnot, it was very helpful. Um, with a shallow socket on it, it's not much longer and it's, it's a lifesaver trying to, rather than trying to work around with an extension or something like that. So yeah. yeah. This thing is a lot heavier as well. It is a lot heavier, and it's, a lot yeah, heavier. and it's an aluminum case. So I mean, the mechanism inside is going to be I, five, six pounds probably. I guess comes in just over three. So if it's something you're going to be doing a lot of work with, if you're working, like I say, in a trade and you have this in your hand a lot, um, I know I work with some mechanics and the lighter body tools, uh, it adds up over a day, you know, three, four pounds off of that. It's, uh, it's going to show. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, before we dive into the challenge, a yeah. um, couple things just to wrap up. So Gary asked, uh, how much downward pressure do you use with the sander? As someone who just used the sander, I will say not very much. <laughs> Worked very well without a lot of pressure. So Gary, you can take that to the bank. Um, Dominic in Toronto, 
Does the sander come in long or short looking for a fine sander for automotive? Yeah, um, this guy, I mean, it's a six inch sander. So any six inch uh, hook and loop um, uh, Velcro backed uh, paper you can find, you could go up to, you know, uh, 1200 grit, 2000 grit. Uh, you know, the choice is yours. So yeah. you could use it for any kind of auto body application. That's yeah. ideally what it's used for. Yeah. And Mike asks, how often do you put oil in the tools? We are, we covered that. It's every day. Try to put. Yeah, daily or if you're day. doing an excessive amount of use with one specific tool, maybe you could add some oil during that. Die grinders, especially sanders, things that are spinning at high RPM, mm -hmm. uh, keep them lubricated and again, keep the air dry too. All right. Well, Derek, what do you have set up for, for us here today? So what we're going to do here, uh, we've got a uh, tire changing contest set up. So basically, <laughs> it's a... It's Let me just, just a, move my phone so I don't yeah, smash no, it. Yeah, that's going to come out of our paycheck. <laughs> so Can this is a, just a 13-inch trailer tire with a 5-volt pattern hub. And uh, we're going to use the uh, stubby impact. And we're going to pull the tire off, put it down, put the tire back on, reinstall it. And we're going to see who can do it faster. All right. Yeah. Well... Just a reminder, you can win these tools. <laughs> yes, that's, that, that's I, true. I hope I can win this one so I can practice this on my Civic after. Okay. All right. Right. So I'm watching. Do we need to, what do we need for this for PP? Do we got gloves? Do we need yeah, goggles? Yeah, um, gloves and need... goggles. That's really all you need. Okay. I mean, you could, if you're, if you're working around it a lot, you could use some ear protection, but yeah. uh, it's a pretty quiet tool. Okay. Yep. All right, let's give it a shot here. Here we go. We're going to be, we're going to be timing this. Okay. So Jillian's got the timer. Okay. Here we go. Look at that. This guy is a professional. Putting them down. This reminds me of a Christmas story. I'm a little bit nervous. I typically wouldn't drive them on with the impact, but I'm going to get them started. Okay. I don't want to round them off. See, I'm, I'm going second, so I don't care. I'll round them right off. <laughs> <laughs> we do have to use this again, Dan. So. All right, I won't be rounding them off. Let's see. Once again, you're watching See at Work. You're watching our very own Derek Chalmers. Put a tire on <laughs> using the air impact wrench, the stubby. What's that time? He's asking seconds. for the time. I've done 53 seconds I've, and I've, a notification to boot. I've done better. That is great. I've done better, he says. Congrats. That was great. That's right. Okay, so now it's your turn. That was a great time. Yeah. I feel like I was just in NASCAR, in the pits. NASCAR is going to a single nut next year, so they only have to do one. I knew that. Of course you did. <laughs> Let me just test the tool. All right. Yeah. Yeah. We're ready right. to go. How many how many seconds do I get shaved off at the start? Do I get like a bonus? I'll just start now. Okay. Oh my God. How much time do we have for this? Oh, got it. Okay. I'm going to at least be two minutes. That's the old hand trick. We have trick. a tool for that. That's the old hand trick. Oh, that's a clock killer right there. <laughs> that is a clock killer. Well, we're going to have to... Well, that's the new strategy. Just hammer it. Oh, come on. Oh, that's a big time clock killer. You, gonna... you know it's good when everyone is, la is laughing. That's, that's my job here, apparently. If you're broken down on the side of the road and you see me driving up, yeah. I think you're, you're, you're feeling up. pretty good about your odds of survival. I'm just doing what you did just to, to not round the edges. Is that what you called yeah, it? Yeah, you there? just start them a little bit. You don't have to go all the way down there. We, time check. What are we at? Three minutes. That's a good sound. It's on. It is on. What is the time? 113.35. Oh, 113.35. <laughs> all right. You know what? We got time. Let's see it work. We got all the time in the world. Let's run it again. Let's run it again. I'm just kidding. We don't have time to run it again. Wow. Well, that was awesome. Those are the... <laughs> Come out of breath here a little right? bit. Yeah, I think okay? I'm all yeah. right. I'm glad we only have one tire to change. Um, that was really fun. Easy to use. Um, we, have, we have to pick. We have to pick our winners right now. Okay. Because we, that. like we said at the start of the show, 
or I guess a little bit into the show, we're giving away the, th the three tools that we featured today. So I'm just waiting for the news to come in, the breaking news to come in on my mobile. Uh, but until then, a question that we didn't cover during it that we probably should have, and uh, Don asked the question, what's the advantage of air tools over electric? I think that's the bigger... Well, I mean, if you have a compressor already, um, so you know, something to consider is the cost. Depending on what you're looking at for electric, I mean, you can run into the mid to high 20 volts and up into 60 volts, mm -hmm. but you could be looking at four, five, over $1,000 for some of the tools. Something like this guy comes in at $149.99. So if you've already got a compressor, uh, winter, summer tire changes, let's say that kind of thing, very handy. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So yeah. cost can be a factor. Um, uh, depending on what you're doing too, if it has to be intrinsically safe, you have to use air. You can't use electric. So if it's anything around fuel or fumes, that's something to consider as well. That's, yeah, the intrinsically safe piece is one that, uh, yeah, one that I don't know a lot of people, a general use kind of person would consider, but that's a great point. Yep. Yeah, that is yep. a great point. All right, so we have our three winners picked out today to win the three tools we featured, which were the orbital sander, the flange and punch, and the st what's this one? The stubby the micro, micro stubby impact. The micro stubby impact. I was going right. to say stubby micro. It's so the winners are, and thank you for watching, everybody. And we hope you tune in next time to watch See at Work. I'm Dan. This is Derek. The winners of the tools are, I'm probably going to butcher your last names. I apologize about it already. Curtis Richtick, Dominic Marini, and Gord McHugh. Congratulations. Congratulations. You have won each one, one of these tools, one each, one of these beautiful tools. Derek will sign them for you. He's sure. going to sign them with the silver Sharpie. Send him over. He might even engrave his name into it and his number. Maybe just so you can text him, ask him sure. questions whenever you need. We can do that. Can we do that? I sure. don't think we can. <laughs> Thank you all for watching. This has been See at Work. We'll see you next time, I believe, in, uh, in about a month. See you then.